a little damp still, which is perfect because when you put your spackling on, if it's dry or anything, you can always add a little drop of water to it. But um, when the gesso is wet, it kind of makes it adhere to the box better. And I like that. So just put a clump of that on there. And then take your spatula, whatever you want to use, knife, whatever, and just try to push it down onto the wood so that it's going to have a nice grip to it. Doesn't matter what it looks like right now, you're just getting the foundation. And depending on how thick you want it, is how thick you put it on. It's very basic. You finish this with, remember it's going to end up pretty tall, so I like to keep it kind of close to the box, not too thick, except for right in the middle where you dig it out. All right, that's usually how it starts. It's not, you know, real pretty or anything right now. Whatever you have left over on your palette knife, just scrape back into your bucket. You can use it later. Move this. All right, so um, you could do a heart shape out of it for a geode, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm just going to go ahead and stick my palette knife in there and just start scraping it around and scraping the sections that I want in the middle of my geode. And then just smooth it off to the side, like so. This is gonna be the glitzy, shiny center part of the geode. So it's whatever shape you want it and however big you want it, that's what you do. Doesn't matter if there's stuff like this at the bottom, you can leave it. Gotta get your hands involved. Gotta play in your paint, life's too short. All right, so it kind of looks like a heart. Not sure I want that. So I'm just gonna extend this part a little bit more. Yeah, I like it. That'll work. All right, so that's your spackling. Don't worry about that this isn't even or anything. Doesn't matter because you're gonna be painting on it and stuff like that, so there's your spackling. Now you can wait for the spackling to dry or you can just go ahead right now with colors. If you put your acrylics on a wet spackling, they're gonna change and morph a little bit, but what I found is it's, um, it turns out very cool. Like when you put green on there, for some reason, it gets real mossy looking. And so it's great for like um, landscapes and such. So anyway, okay, there we've got your gesso and the spackling and I'll be back. Okay. This is Melody again from Kate Charles Art. And I'm doing a tutorial on how to make the geode box. I've got my gesso, my spackling, and all of it's been sitting there just for a few minutes just to get the top to not be too soaking wet and move around. What you're going to do right now is you're going to put your sparkly color in and I've got some blue and some purple. I don't know if you can see this. It's a weird camera thing. Some glitter and I'm just going to start with putting that blue right in the center. If I can. well and I'm using some old 
brushes that aren't worth anything for this because my um, gesso and the spackling compound is still pretty wet. So pretty much ruins them. I try and get it out, but it makes it kind of hard and crunchy, but still they're good for this type of stuff that you're doing. So just spread in any glittery, whatever color you want. Black would be nice as well, I think. And I just go ahead and push it kind of into the edges a little bit so you don't want to see a, I don't want to see a line. I want it to be more free flowing. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of purple in there. Just for fun. I'm going to take that with a fan brush and I'm just going to run it up onto one side because I like when there's a difference of shadows and lights and stuff. This is mostly all going to be under some glitz and things anyway, so you're really not going to notice that much of your brush strokes or anything. I'm going to take the edge of it and run it around the outside, or you can use a toothpick or whatever you got. So. So run some blue around the outside. Remember the spackling is still kind of wet and that's kind of cool because it it'll get darker and lighter in different places on its own and I kind of like that you can do it any way you want you can wait until it's all nice and dry whatever I just took up a bunch of spackling right there but I don't care like I said, it's all going to be finished in a resin or a UV resin anyway, so it'll all smooth out. Another ring around here. The fun part about this is it just keeps kind of changing as you go. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I'll work on the other outsides later, but for right now, I'm going to use this opal glitter that I got at Hobby Lobby. And just going to put a glob of it in here around the edges. kind of weird to do this because it's like arts and crafts less actual you know painting but it ends up so beautiful and I have had so many great comments on it and people wanting to buy them I thought 
doesn't matter if it's arts and crafts, people like it. And I love doing them, it's just so fun. Just never know how they're gonna end up. So there's that. And then I wanna get another little bit of glitz. So I have this glitter, whatever. looks cheap and cheesy because it's I mean it's huge glitter but actually um, it works the best because once you get the resin on it it's hard to see if the other glitter is too fine it just kind of gets swallowed up in the piece and so turned out pretty cool already This is all just however you want to do it. That's the beauty of art, isn't it? So, so I want two predominantly glitzy places in here, but the rest, I'm just going to let bits and pieces come over to it and not go crazy with the glitter on those top and bottom parts. All right, so there's that. Doesn't look like much right now, but um, I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. Probably add a little bit more paint in the blue, and then I will be back to do some more detailing work on the rock. Okay. All right, so. I bought these rocks, these little crystals, and they were too big, so I just took them outside and hammered them away. And they're gonna go right on top of that glittery spot right there. Um, I think it makes it look better to have the crystal rock on top of it. Then you just see the glitz coming through and you don't see chunks of glitter so much. So I'm gonna do that. Before I do, I'm gonna add a little bit of black. Um, in the center. I want that a little bit deeper color, so I can find some. Hold on. Alright, so this is the ink. If you have ink, you're going to love the, what happens when you put it on um, your spackling. It's really a cool looking thing. So I'm just going to mix it in a little bit here and there, kind of run it through. Like I said before, there's really, for me, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just do it until you like what you're seeing. All right, so you've got, starting from the top, just some gesso on your wood box, and then um, your spackling, nice and thin. You carve out the spackling from the middle, however shape you want your geode to be. And then you put your paint in there and some glitter. All right, so now it's time for some glass. And you just pop it in there anywhere you want. Move it around. If it gets covered up, it's okay because you've got your sparkly paint in there and the sparkles will get around it and it will reflect the light and it looks kind of cool. So 